today. Today is known as the Sunday of the Prodigal Son because we read from the Gospel of Luke the parable about the Prodigal Son. Today is the second Sunday in preparation of the Holy Great Fast. Last week we heard about the parable of the publican and the Pharisee reminding us about the importance of humility and striving to overcome pride. And today, we hear many lessons. Most prominently, we hear the lesson of a sincere desire to return back to God. This son went to his father and asked for his inheritance. Imagine going to your father, your mother, and saying, give me everything that I'm going to get when you die, but I can't wait until then. The fathers gave it to him. And he took his inheritance and went to a far away country and wasted all of it on very sinful, very selfish living. All things imaginable, he fulfilled all the desires of his flesh all the desires of his mind and heart. He lived perfect freedom, did as he wanted to, didn't care about God's law, didn't care about truth. And so he became impoverished and had to look for work. And the only work he could find was to feed swine. Now granted, this parable is being spoken to Jews, and there's nothing lower than sweeting swine, than feeding swine. He finally comes to his senses and runs back to his father, and his father, seeing him from a distance, ran to him and embraced him. The son says, Father, I have sinned before heaven and before thee. I am not worthy to be called your son any longer. Make me at least one of thy hired servants. And the father received him and restored him completely. Now the older son, who remained faithful to, God, to his father, saw all of this and was angry. He thought to himself, how dare this brother of mine come back? And how dare my father welcome him? Can't he see he's not worthy of mercy? For he has done terrible things. He should be cast out. He should be thrown to the swine. He doesn't deserve us. But the father said, Son, you're always with me, and everything I have is yours. For your brother was dead and is now alive, alive through repentance. He was lost, and now he's found. This is a tremendous parable, tremendous lesson of repentance for us, brothers and sisters. <coughs> Saint Ignatius Branchelinov reminds us that we too are given great gifts. Most predominantly, we're given the gifts of a mind and a heart. He says we're created for heaven and we are to use these gifts to learn about heaven. We are to use these gifts to be in union with God, to be fulfilled and transfigured by His grace, to grow in faith, to love God and love our neighbor, to master the virtues, to overcome sin. We're not to use our mind and our heart in selfish ways. 
Because if we do, we separate ourselves from God. Many people misunderstand this concept of freedom. They think freedom is to do whatever you want. Not really. St. Paul, in today's epistle reading to the Corinthians, said, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. Why would we use our freedom to do something that will hurt ourselves? Why would we use this precious time on earth, wasting it away on things that really don't matter? We are to use our mind and our heart to draw closer to God. But we become distracted. Our values become distorted. Our goal in life becomes misdirected. We tend to separate earthly life from heavenly life. I'll live a life here in accordance with what's good and acceptable by society, and then I'll trust on God's mercy to forgive me. But God came into this world. He took flesh. We just celebrated the Feast of Nativity to reunite us with God, to reunite heaven with earth. So life is life. There's no such thing as compartmentalizing life. We don't have a work life, a family life, a church life. We have one life. And we don't have an earthly life and a heavenly life. We have one life. And we are to use this portion of our life here on earth so that we can become citizens of heaven when we leave this earth. It's connected. It's one life. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. There are so many things in this world that bring us much pleasure but not very helpful in drawing closer to God. There are many things that we kind to justify that we do, but injure us and handicap us from drawing closer to God. And we think, well, tomorrow, tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow leads to next week, Next week leads to next year. Next year leads to old age. And then what strength do we have? It is so easy for us, brothers and sisters, to be like this prodigal son, to go away in a faraway country, justifying our actions, forgetting about God, not praying, not fasting, not reading Holy Scripture, being ignorant even of God, and then expect to receive all the wonderful things, or worse, we become so distracted by earthly life, by all the pleasures of this world, that this is all we want. The fathers of the church warn us that the swine in today's gospel reading are our sinful thoughts and desires. And remember, in the parable, the, the man gave the prodigal son this work to do and forced him to feed swine. And it's just like the devil forcing us to feed our thoughts, to feed our passions, to feed our desires, to feed and buffet up us our selfishness and pride 
making us better than everyone else. All these things lead to destruction, not only of our own soul, but our relationships. We can't understand completely the depths of God's mercy. But He forgives us. He shows mercy to us. And we don't deserve it. Adam and Eve lost paradise because of one sin. We sin far more than Adam and Eve. Even after baptism, even after receiving the good news, even after receiving the Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, first and foremost, let us never be, let us never emulate the bad characteristics of the older son, judging others, saying others aren't worthy of mercy. But let us be like the older son who is always faithful to God. And the younger son, though we may waste a lot of time and a lot of effort on sinful things, let us run back to God. He is merciful and compassionate. Just as we can't measure His glory and power we can't even come close to measure the depths of his mercy and willingness to forgive us. All we have to do is run back to him and say, Heavenly Father, I have sinned before, before heaven and before thee. Make me again a son and daughter and restore me in thy grace. Amen. Um.